I do maintain, here's something which I predict will happen. That's a prediction. I maintain that as AI becomes more powerful, then people will change their behaviors. And we will see all kinds of unprecedented things which are not happening right now. Así que Elias Sutskever, por si aún no lo conocéis, es básicamente uno de los grandes artífices del aprendizaje profundo. Se le conoce sobre todo por su trabajo inicial en AlexNet, esa red neuronal que supuso un antes y un después y que prácticamente dio el pistoletazo de salida a toda la revolución actual de la IA. Y por supuesto, por su etapa en OpenAI, que cofundó, donde como científico jefe de IA contribuyó a crear GPT-3 y GPT-4. Pero se marchó y ahora dirige una startup novedosa y muy discreta llamada Safe Super Intelligence. Su objetivo es justo lo que indica el nombre, desarrollar una superinteligencia y lograr que se asegura de alguna forma. Y en esta entrevista fresquísima con Duarte Spatel, Ilia nos ofrece una versión poco habitual sobre lo que están preparando. Además aborda el final de la escalada, el elemento que falta para una verdadera generalización, cómo la AGI podría alterar el comportamiento humano y el momento en que podría aparecer la superinteligencia. Así que sí, esta va a ser de las intensas. Vamos al lío, vale. Una de las primeras cosas que deja claro Ilia en esta entrevista es que la era del escalado lo ha absorbido todo. Todo el mundo se dedica únicamente a hacer modelos cada vez más grandes porque es lo único que saben con certeza que funciona, pero prácticamente nadie trae ideas nuevas. Según él, lo que de verdad hace falta ahora es más investigación, no más potencia de cálculo. Mirad esto. One consequence of um, the age of scaling is that there was this um, scaling sucked out all the air in the room. Yeah. And so because scaling sucked out all the air in the room everyone started to do the same thing we got to the point where uh, we are in a world where there are more companies than ideas mm. by quite a bit actually on that you know there is this silicon valley saying that says that ideas are cheap execution is everything and people say that a lot yeah and there is truth to that But then I saw I saw someone say on Twitter um, something like, "If ideas are are so cheap, how come no one's having any ideas?" <laughs> And I think it's true too. I think, like, you, if you think about um, a research progress in terms of bottlenecks, there are several bottlenecks. If you go back to the if if you, and um, one of them is ideas, and one of them is your ability to bring them to life, yeah. which might be compute, but also engineering. Pues sí, el cuello de botella ya no son las GPU, el cuello de botella es la imaginación. Justo después menciona a AlexNet y recuerda que se creó con solo dos GPUs y que los primeros Transformers se hicieron con unas pocas decenas. Hoy disponemos de millones de GPU que son muchísimo más potentes y eficientes, y aún así todo el mundo está construyendo los mismos modelos de lenguaje grandes y los mismos modelos del mundo. Esta es una de las razones por las que Ilya decidió irse a montar su propio proyecto. Y para entender de verdad qué está persiguiendo en Safe Super Intelligence, primero hay que tener claro Claro, ¿qué es la AGI de verdad? Al menos según la define Ilia. Porque eso no solo nos da pistas sobre qué están trabajando en SSI, sino que también explica por qué simplemente seguir escalando los sistemas actuales no nos va a llevar hasta allí. The word, the term AGI. Why does this term exist? It's a very particular term. Why does it exist? There's a reason. The reason that the term AGI exists is, in my opinion, not so much because it's like a very important essential descriptor of, of, of some end state of intelligence, but because it is a reaction to a different term that existed, and the term is narrow AI. If you go back to ancient history of game playing AI, of checkers AI, chess AI, computer games AI, everyone would say, look at this narrow intelligence. Sure, the chess AI can beat Kasparov, but it can't do anything else. It is so narrow artificial narrow intelligence. So in response, as a reaction to this, some people said, well, this is not good. It is so narrow. What we need is general AI. General AI, an AI that can just do all the things. The second, and, and that term just got a lot of traction. Yeah. The second thing that got a lot of traction is pre-training. Specifically, the recipe of pre-training. I think the current, the way people do RL now is maybe um, un is undoing the conceptual imprint of pre-training. 
but pre-training had the property. You do more pre-training and the model gets better at everything, more or less uniformly. Yeah. General AI. Pre-training gives AGI. But the thing that happened with AGI and pre-training is that in some sense they overshot the target. Because by the kind, if you think about the term AGI, you will realize, and especially in the context of pre-training, you will realize that a human being is not an AGI. Because a human being, yes, there is definitely a foundation of skills. A human being, a human being lacks a huge amount of knowledge. Instead, we rely on continual learning. We rely on continual learning. And so then when you think about, okay, so let's suppose that we achieve success and we produce a safe super, some kind of safe super intelligence. The question is, but how do you define it? Where on the curve of continual learning is it going to be? I will produce like um, a super intelligent 15 year old that's very eager to go and you say, okay, I'm going to, they don't know very much at all. The great student, very eager. You go and be a programmer. You go and be a doctor. Go and learn. So you could imagine that the deployment itself will involve some kind of a learning mm -hmm. trial and error period. It's a process as opposed to you drop the finished thing. Pues creo que esta es la forma perfecta de verlo. La AGI no es un producto terminado que de repente pueda hacer cualquier tarea sin más. La AGI es la propia capacidad de aprender, la habilidad de generalizar de verdad como lo hacemos las personas. Esa es precisamente la pieza que falta y que él está intentando resolver. Así que una vez tengas ese sistema, un sistema que pueda aprender cualquier cosa como lo haría una persona, pero evidentemente mucho más rápido porque es silicio, en paralelo y de forma instantánea, ¿qué pasa entonces? ¿Qué ocurre? Duarquesh plantea en realidad dos escenarios posibles, uno con mejor recursiva de sí mismo y otro con una explosión de inteligencia. Eilia reconoce que ambos son probables y comparte su propia previsión sobre cómo un sistema así podría cambiar el mundo. Es bastante alucinante. Echad un vistazo. It gets deployed into the world the same way a human laborer might join an organization. Exactly. And it seems like one of these two things might happen. Maybe neither of these happens. One, this super efficient learning algorithm becomes superhuman becomes as good as you and potentially even better at the task of ML research. And as a result, the algorithm itself becomes more and more superhuman. The other is, even if that doesn't happen, if you have a single model, th I mean, this, this is explicitly your vision. If you have a single model or instances of a model which are deployed through the economy, doing different jobs, learning how to do those jobs, continually learning on the job, picking up all the skills that any human could pick up, but actually picking them all up at the same time and then amalgamating the learnings. You basically have a model which functionally becomes super intelligent, even without any sort of recursive self-improvement in software, right? Because you now have one model that can do every single job in the economy and humans can't merge our minds in the same way. And so do you expect some sort of like intelligence explosion from broad deployment? I think that it is likely that we will have rapid economic growth. I think the broad deployment, like, there are two arguments you could make, which are conflicting. One is that, look, if indeed you get, once indeed you get to a point where you have an AI that can learn to do things quickly, and you have many of them, then they will then there will be a strong force to deploy them in the economy unless there will be some kind of a regulation that stops it which by the way there might be but i think the idea of very rapid economic growth for some time i think it's very possible from broad deployment then the question is how rapid it's going to be so i think this is hard to know because on the one hand you have this very efficient worker On the other hand, there is the world is just really big and there's a lot of stuff. And that stuff moves at a different speed. But then on the other hand, now the AI could, could yeah, exactly. you know, so I think very rapid economic growth is possible. And we will see like all kinds of things like different countries with different rules and the ones which have the friendlier rules, the economic growth will be faster. 
Pues no hace falta ser un genio para darse cuenta de que el despliegue masivo de un sistema de AGE auténtico, uno que pueda aprender prácticamente cualquier cosa tal como lo haría una persona, podría desencadenar un crecimiento económico rapidísimo. Pero para construir ese sistema desde cero, sí que hace falta un genio. E Ilia sostiene que ni siquiera los investigadores que están trabajando ahora en AGI terminan de entender lo que están creando. Cree que no solo vamos a ver un crecimiento rapidísimo, sino cambios radicales en el comportamiento humano que no tienen precedentes. Pone varios ejemplos de cómo podría ser eso, cómo reaccionarían gobiernos y empresas, y más adelante hasta da una estimación de cuándo podríamos empezar a verlo. I do maintain, here's something which I predict will happen, that's a prediction. I maintain that as AI becomes more powerful, then people will change their behaviors. And we will see all kinds of unprecedented things which are not happening right now. And I'll give some examples. I do, like, I, I think, I think for better or worse, the The frontier companies will play a very important role in what happens, as will the government. And the kind of things that I think we'll see, which you see the beginnings of, companies that are fierce competitors starting collabor to, to collaborate on AI safety. You may have seen OpenAI and Anthropic doing a first small step, but that did not exist. That's actually something which I predicted in one of my talks about three years ago that such a thing will happen. I also maintain that as AI continues to become more powerful, more visibly powerful, there will also be a desire from governments and the public to do something. And I think that this is a very important force of showing the AI. That's number one. Number two, okay, so then the AI is being built. What needs to, what needs to be done? So one thing that I maintain that will happen is that right now, people who are working on AI, I maintain that the AI doesn't feel powerful because of its mistakes. I do think that at some point the AI will start to feel powerful, actually. And I think when that happens, we will see a big change in the way all AI companies approach safety. They'll become much more paranoid. I think I, I say this as a, predict, as, a, as, a, as a prediction that we will see happen. We'll see if I'm right. But I think this is something that will happen because they will see the AI becoming more powerful. Everything that's happening right now, I maintain, is because people look at today's AI and it's hard to imagine the future AI. And there is a third thing which needs to happen. And I think this is this, this and, and I'm talking about it in, in broader terms, not just from the perspective of SSI because you asked me about our company. But the question is, okay, so then what should, what should the companies aspire to build? Yeah. What should they aspire to build? And there has been one big idea that actually every, that, um, everyone has been locked, in, locked into, which is the, the self-improving AI. And why, why did it happen? Because there is fewer ideas than companies. But I maintain that there is something that's better to build. And I think that everyone will actually want that. It's like, the AI that's robustly aligned to care about sentient life specifically. I think in particular, it will be, there's a case to be made that it will be easier to build an AI that cares about sentient life than an AI that cares about human life alone, because the AI itself will be sentient. And if you think about things like mirror neurons and human empathy for animals, which is, you know, you might argue it's not big enough, but it exists. I think it's an emergent property from the fact that we model others with the same circuit that we used to model ourselves because that's the most efficient thing. To pues sí, todo va a cambiar a toda velocidad y ahí Ilia roza brevemente el problema del alineamiento, que sigue sin resolverse y plantea una posible vía. Enseñarle a la IA que le importe la vida consciente, no necesariamente la vida humana en concreto, sino cualquier forma de vida consciente. Ahora bien, él mismo reconoce que probablemente no sea la mejor solución y que a largo plazo podría traer problemas. Al final considera que la única forma de que la humanidad sobreviva a lo que viene y conserve cierto control en este mundo pasa por fusionarnos con la IA. Mira de So one reason why I liked the AI that cares for sentient life, mm. you know, and we can debate on whether it's good or bad, but 
if the first n of these dramatic systems actually do care for, you know, love humanity or something, you know, care for sentient life, obviously this also needs to be achieved. This needs to be achieved. So if this is achieved by the first n of those systems, then, there, then I can see it go well, at least for quite some time. And then there is the question of what happens in the long run. Yeah. What happens in the long run? How do you achieve a long run equilibrium? And I think that there, there is an answer as well. And I don't like this answer, but it needs to be considered. In the long run, you might say, okay, so if you have a world where powerful AIs exist, in the short run, you could say, okay, you have universal high income. You have universal high income. And we're all doing well. But we know that, what do the Buddhists say? Change is the only constant. And so things change. And there is some kind of government, political structure thing, and it changes. Because these things have a shelf life. You know, some new, new government thing comes up and it functions, and then after some time, it stops functioning. That's something that we see happening all the time. And so I think that for the long run equilibrium, one approach, you could say, okay, so maybe every person will have an AI that will do their bidding. And that's good. And if that could be maintained indefinitely, that's true. But the downside with that is, okay, so then the AI goes and like earns, earn, earn, you know, earns money for, for the person and, you know, advocates for their needs in like the political sphere. And maybe then writes a little report saying, okay, here's what I've done, here's the situation. And the person says, great, keep it up. But the person is no longer a participant. And then you can say that's a precarious place to be in. But, so I'm going to preface by saying, I don't like this solution, but it is a solution. And the solution is if people become part AI with some kind of neural link plus plus. Because what will happen as a result is that now the AI understands something and we understand it too. Like, because now the understanding is transmitted wholesale. So now if the AI is in some situation, now it's like you are involved in that situation yourself fully. And I think this is the answer to the equilibrium. Pues sí, resulta inquietante y como emocionante a la vez. Vamos, que la reacción inicial de cualquiera al oír lo de un implante cerebral es ni de coña, pero si la AGI se despliega en la economía y tenemos sistemas que aprenden cualquier cosa, trabajan sin parar las 24 horas, no necesitan dormir ni cobrar sueldo, entonces la única forma de seguir el ritmo podría ser convirtiéndonos en parte del propio sistema. Básicamente, si no puedes con ellos, únete a ellos. Y si te estáis preguntando cuándo vamos a tener que empezar a preocuparnos de verdad por esto, aquí tenéis la cronología personal de Ilia. What, uh, speaking of forecasts, what are your forecasts to this system you're describing which can learn as well as a human and subsequently as a result becomes superhuman? I think like 5 uh, to 20. 5 to 20 years? Mm -hmm. Pues eso es básicamente lo esencial de la entrevista. Ilia considera que la era del escalado ha terminado y que vuelve la época de la investigación pura. Para él, una agia auténtica no es algo que ya sepa hacer todos los trabajos, sino algo que pueda aprender a hacer cualquier trabajo como lo haría una persona, pero muchísimo más rápido. Eso es exactamente lo que está intentando construir en el SSI y sabe que será tan transformador que la única forma de seguir siendo relevantes tal vez sea fusionarnos con ella. Entonces, ¿qué os parece todo esto? He visto reacciones de todo tipo en la comunidad a algunos les molestó que no desvelara nada concreto, pero si prestáis atención de verdad, en realidad sí que dibuja bastante bien en qué están trabajando. Espero haberlo dejado claro en este repaso. Gracias por ver el vídeo, ojalá os haya servido de algo. Si habéis llegado hasta este punto del vídeo, dale like, suscríbete y nos vemos en el próximo vídeo. Déjame saber qué piensas en los comentarios. Una IA no te quitará el trabajo, pero una persona que la sepa usar, sí. Es por eso que he creado La Señal, una newsletter donde te explico cómo usarla, nuevas noticias, nuevas herramientas y mucho más. Además, si te unes a nuestra comunidad privada, tendrás acceso a decenas de documentos, libros, tutoriales y muchas cosas realmente útiles. Actúa antes que tu competencia y únete a la Señal Pro. Link en la descripción.